Hello, dear friends! The idea of building human torpedoes with a cockpit came long before the final defeat of Japan. This original idea was proposed in the summer of 1942, shortly after the Battle of Midway. The development of the first Kitan design lasted until the summer of 1944. At the end of July, the new vehicle went out for testing. In the shortest possible time, the torpedo was tested, finalized and put into mass production. The basis of this project was the heavy torpedo Type 93. The Japanese industry since the autumn of 1944 managed to build at least 300 Type 1 torpedoes. Other products of the Kitan family were ordered and built in smaller numbers. As a result, the Navy only had time to use Type 1 and Type 4 torpedoes in combat. The rest of the torpedoes never made it to the theater of war. Therefore, you and I will take a look at the Kitan version of the Type 1. The total length of the torpedo was almost 15 meters, the maximum diameter was 1 meter. For comparison, the Type 93 torpedo was 9 meters long and 610 millimeters in diameter. When ready for launch, the human torpedo weighed 8 tons. The two-cylinder 550 horsepower engine used kerosene and oxygen, allowing it to reach a speed of up to 30 knots. That's 56 km per hour. The walking depth of the torpedo did not exceed 35 meters, but the design allowed to dive into 80 meters. The maximum range on fuel was 42 nautical miles. The torpedo from the inside was an engine, a powerful charge and a very small place for a suicide pilot. It was so narrow, however, that even by the standards of small Japanese there was a terrible lack of space. Right in front of the kamikaze's face there was a periscope, and somewhere below there was a speed control knob, which essentially regulated the oxygen supply to the engine. At the top of the torpedo there was another control lever, which was responsible for the direction of movement. The instrument panel was stuffed with all sorts of devices. Fuel and oxygen consumption, pressure gauge, clock, depth gauge and so on. Near the pilot's feet there was a valve for the intake of outside water into the ballast tank to stabilize the torpedo weight. It was not so simple to control a torpedo, and also training of pilots left much to be desired. Schools appeared spontaneously and also spontaneously were destroyed by American bombers. Initially, Kitan was used to attack enemy ships moored in base. A carrier submarine with 4 to 6 Kitan attached to the outside detected enemy vessels and built a trajectory. The Kitan was directed to the target in order to hit it. And after that, the submarine captain gave the last order to the suicide pilots. Through a narrow tube, the suicide divers entered the cockpit of the Kitan, shut the hatches, and received orders over the radio from the captain of the submarine. The kamikaze divers were completely blind. They could not see where they were heading because the periscope could not be used for more than 3 seconds, as there was a risk of detection of the torpedo by the enemy. The first evidence of a Kitan attack recorded by the United States was in November 1944. The attack involved three submarines and 12 Kitan torpedoes against an American vessel moored in Ulithi Atoll, Caroline Islands. One submarine simply sank as a result of the attack, and out of the eight remaining Kitan, two failed on launch, two sank, one disappeared, though later found washed ashore, and one exploded before reaching its target. The remaining Kitan crashed into the Mississippi tanker and sank it. The Japanese command considered the operation a success, and it was immediately reported to the Emperor. The next episode with the participation of human torpedoes took place on the 9th of January 1945. In this battle, one submarine failed to reach the torpedo launching area, one was destroyed by American depth charges, and the other successfully used the suicide human torpedoes. As a result of this attack, the Japanese managed to seriously damage several American ships and sink a landing craft. All of the damaged ships were repaired and returned to service. Overall, the effectiveness of the suicide divers was unacceptably low. 
Having lost about a hundred well-trained fighters and several submarines with crews, the Japanese Navy sank or damaged about 10 enemy ships. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to influence the course of war. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and don't forget subscribe to the channel. See you all later!